Illinois' population has been shrinking for four years running. Few cities have felt that more than Decatur. At a time, a booming city, it's now shrinking, losing families and businesses to places with more opportunity. But there are people still in Decatur, people who have seen a lot of this change and know the city doesn't have to stay on this path. This is Forgotten Illinois, and today we're talking to the people of Decatur about how to renew a city that gives everyone a chance. To understand Decatur at present, you first have to understand its history, why people came here in the first place, and why the city was once thriving. No family understands that more than Cory Walkers, whose Decatur roots run deep. My family migrated here from Brownsville, Tennessee. The bulk of African Americans that, uh, that live in Decatur now is here by the way of Brownsville, Tennessee, you know, because Wagner's casting actually, you know, gave African Americans an opportunity to make uh, as good as wages that you can make in, in, in the 50s and 60s. What are some things, sharing some of your perspective as a business owner and somebody who's lived here your whole life, some things that would open up opportunities for Decatur and move it forward? I think that we have to have more uh, things outside of just focusing on two entities uh, that you know could possibly belly up and move anytime. We need to focus on more uh, gems and jewels and diamonds that we have here in this community. I just want to be able to leave Decatur better than my grandfather left it for my father and left it for me, leaving it for me, and just Decatur being a better Decatur for my four boys. Businesses in Decatur right now, much like the rest of the state, often feel pinched. Even the ones that have stood in the city for decades, or in the case of John Phillips' service station, a century, are not immune to the regional decline. So John, tell me a little bit about the, this building's history. It was built in 1915. It was the first service station in Decatur. Uh, so it's been here over 100 years now uh, in different forms and other. You know, there's been uh, a po steady population decline as people leave not just Illinois, but specifically leave Decatur. What are some of the other bigger um, factors that affect you as a business owner, whether they're specific to Decatur or maybe something the state of Illinois is doing that affects you? Obviously, property taxes. At one point, when we first took this place over, our property taxes were $8,000 a year. And in one year, uh, it went from $8,000 a year to $28,000 a year. So currently, right now, we are looking to uh, relocate the garage somewhere else and maybe get us completely get out of the gas business. Dave Jordan, who's owned the popular restaurant The Wagon in town for 37 years, has had to face many of the same hurdles John has. But each and every day, he tries to adapt the best he can. I, I worked for uh, Illinois Power for a while, and uh, I got the opportunity to go out on my own, and I thought I'd just take you the chance, see what happened. I've been, uh, I've been very fortunate. I think a lot of it, I think a lot of the reason I survived it is because I've been here so long. I've established, uh, I had a good, good customer base, and uh, they kept me going. Uh, you know, one time Decatur had several big manufacturers, and uh, now you have very few. And, uh, it, was, it was a big blue collar town, good town, and it's just lost a lot of good jobs. And uh, each day, each week, each month, I mean, I try to come up with new things, new ideas, trying to appeal to this younger generation because I think Decatur's struggling to hang on to the younger people and we need the younger people. Attracting new and young talent like Dave is talking about can be a challenge. And Decatur, losing nearly 5% of its population since the last census, knows this just as well as anywhere else. But fresh perspectives, if even few and far between, can carry some optimism. Zane Peterson, for example, came here to attend college at Millican University. And unlike most, after graduating, he stayed. He opened a successful Chicago-style hot dog restaurant while still in school, and then became a licensed realtor. He believes in Decatur. 
And in his job as a realtor, he tries to show others that belief too. I came to Decatur, I discovered it um, for Millican University. I knew I wanted to go into business and study finance, and that's what I did. I came down to Millican, studied finance, and played on the Millican men's golf team. So at the end of my sophomore year, I invested in a house a couple blocks away from campus, uh, ran it out to a few of my friends, and you know bought that for probably the price that you could buy a garage in the Chicago suburbs or um, some of the Chicago neighborhoods. But for the most part, unfortunately, like a lot of towns like Decatur, it's easy for people to go off to college and then go into a more bustling, booming market. We're not a Chicago, we're not a Nashville, we don't have a ton of amenities. Meanwhile, we do have a, quite a few local amenities. We have a great park district. Uh, I think it's a great quality of life, and that's kind of what it is, and that's my goal, is to try to paint the picture and get people to live here, realize how many amenities we actually do have. That quality of life that Zane is talking about does exist. The challenge is expanding it for everyone. Dove Inc., a Decatur-based nonprofit, is seeking to address the unmet needs of the city, such as homelessness, domestic violence, and re-entry for ex-offenders, among other issues. Christine Gregory, John Phillips' sister, is the group's CEO. We have a poverty issue here locally, but we see more of the issues with not being able to maintain employment, not being able to find employment that's suited to the education of that person. What does a Decatur that thinks, thinks big look like to you? A Decatur that thinks big stops losing people. You have to keep the people and the businesses in order for that to grow. We also need to see a difference in the way that we do taxation around here. I feel like the people in Decatur are taxed and fined um, to within an inch of their lives. Um, we're not working with people who are millionaires and billionaires for the most part. We're working with people who make minimum wage, sometimes at two or three jobs in a lot of cases. And when they see their taxes being spent and being taken away from them and then they don't have the ability to provide for themselves it just does something to you mentally we also have a forgiveness problem um, forgiveness is something that's really hard for people but when you see someone who is struggling with addiction or who has when they were a young person committed a crime if they have done what it takes to get past that problem, we really need to be able to give them a second chance. They need to be able to return to society and be productive. And so you have to really work at it. You have to look at every single person as they're amazing. They have the potential to be amazing. And so what if they weren't amazing yesterday? They can be amazing tomorrow. What about for a whole city? Can a whole city also be looked at through that lens? that it doesn't matter what happened yesterday, but it can be amazing tomorrow. 50 years ago, Decatur was on a different course. And 50 years from now, it could be in another one. Decisions that are made right now will dictate that. And the people still in the city are doing their best to create a future that thrives here, even if other factors push it away. Mm -hmm.